I have four days to break every speedrun record in Space Flight Simulator, like this orbit record that I just broke in half a second. This is only one of 14 remaining records, and I want to hold the first place title for all of them at the same time, which means we have to act fast before someone else beats them. The first two records I'm going to be breaking is the moon and back record and the orbit record, both without cheats. Let's start with the orbit record. The current record is 17.8 seconds, and it's a simple rocket designed to get to orbit just like how you do with any other rocket. My first design for this challenge is a two-stage rocket with a big brain 200 IQ idea. The first stage gets the rocket above the atmosphere, and the second stage gives it the horizontal velocity required to make orbit. However, that's not where the 200 IQ comes in. Let me explain. If you were to use this design normally, the the drag will slow the rockets down after the engine stop, and it won't leave the atmosphere. However, the drag effects only apply when the rocket is within loading distance, which is represented here with the red and green lines. When the rocket leaves the red circle, it doesn't experience any drag. Here's where the 200 IQ idea comes in. We take a rover and place it at a very specific distance away from the launch pad. This causes the rocket to be on the edge of the rover's load distance. After we launch the rocket, we switch to the rover. When the fuel from the rocket gets used up, the rocket would leave the load distance and not experience any more drag. At this time, we can use the 25x time warp to get into space in the quickest time possible. After that, we switch back to the rocket, activate the horizontal stage, and boom, we got ourselves the first record. And here's my final submission time of 8.02 seconds, which is less than half that of the previous world record. Now it's time for the... This record was painful, not because the current record was under a minute or that it hasn't been broken in a year, but because I wanted to do it in under 30 seconds. The current design has two stages to get the rocket to the moon, and the next two stages are responsible for getting the rocket back to Earth, as well as a parachute to keep the capsule from getting destroyed on landing. I point the parachute out because in the rules it says that the rocket that lands on the moon must also return to Earth, but it never said we had to do it safely. Here's my plan to shatter this record. Step 1, build a buff rocket and slam it into the moon. Step 2, take the rocket from the moon and slam it back into the Earth. Easy, right? No. <laughs> Firstly, I need to figure out a combination of engines and fuel tanks that can get the trajectory of the rocket to the same height as the moon. I'll then add another stage on top of that with a rocket facing backwards towards the Earth so we don't have to manually turn the rocket around when we land on the moon. So what about slamming into the moon? Well, for my first designs, I tried putting a skewer at the end of the rocket to try to stick into the moon, similar to my record in the moon and back cheats category. However, this did not work at all and probably costed me a couple of hours of... This is why my final lander design only has two sets of landing legs and a rocket to slow it down somewhat before it hits the moon. After the rocket lands on the moon, it's already pointing at the earth, so all we gotta do is turn on that stage and make our way back. However, this is where another atmospheric skip comes in. As I mentioned before, you don't have to return to earth with the rocket intact. So what we can do is switch to a different rocket and time warp to smash into the earth, ending our time. With all that being said, I'll put a link in the description of the video of my final run of 29.38 seconds. Seconds. For day two, I'm going to go for the no cheats and cheats docking speedrun, as well as the Mars cheats category. And just like always, I have plans to demolish these times. The first idea that came to my head was to use two of my autonomous rockets, slap a docking port on them, and when they both get to orbit, turn around and dock them. But I have a better plan. Remember back to my eight second orbit record? We could just use that rocket, cut it in half, and once they both reach orbit, we can turn around and dock them together. After repeating this process a bunch of times, my final docking record is 45.22 seconds for both the cheats category and the non-cheats category. Now for the Mars and Max cheats category, the current record is 2 minutes and 31 seconds, which is actually insane. The one thing I did notice about this run is that the rocket starts from the ground, and since we're in the cheats category, we could start it above the Carmen line. My original design had a few Hawk engines with the smallest fuel tank to ensure the maximum acceleration. However, it's so fast that here's what the encounter window looks like. I don't have that reaction time. To solve this problem, I decided to not use the infinite fuel cheat and use enough fuel that the engines would run out right before the encounter. Now we just got a time warp there, land on Mars, and return to Earth. My final time is 2 minutes and 24 seconds, which is a few seconds less than the previous world record.
Today is day three, and I'll be going for both of the asteroid records as well as the Mars non cheats category. Let's start with the asteroid cheats record. Usually, when I do the cheats categories, I start from above the Kármán line. But as shown here, the trajectory of the rocket moves as the rocket increases in height, which makes it impossible to make an encounter with the asteroid. So I've started on the ground with this design and not using the fuel cheat. Using this, my final time was a minute 14 seconds. Now it's time to do it without cheat. I'm just gonna do the same idea, but I'll use a similar rocket to the one that we used with the moon and back record. Change the fuel parameters around, change the lander design, and boom, we have a rocket that can get to the asteroid and back. My final time for this run was a minute and seven seconds, which means since it's not cheats, we can use it for the cheats category as well. For the Mars no cheats record, I'm a little bit terrified because the current world record holder currently holds the most first place record. So I assume beating him would be pretty tough. Regardless, I'm thinking about using a similar rocket to my moon and back record, change up the lander design, and change the fuel parameters so we can get a Mars encounter. I eventually did just that and the rocket went after making some adjustments, I can finally get the rocket within the Mars SOI under 30 seconds, which is half the time of the current world record holder, which means we're on an extremely fast pace. However, the rocket still disintegrates because it keeps tipping in the Mars atmosphere. This is because the heat shields are at the front of the rocket and the center mass of the rocket is really high up, which causes it to be very unstable. After moving the heat shields around a bit, I found an equilibrium point that makes the rocket much more easier to control. After this, I've gotten to the point where I'm able to start timing myself. And on the very first run, I got 3 minutes and 30 seconds, which is already 2 minutes less than the previous world record. But we can do better. After doing a few more runs, my final attempt was 2 minutes and 20 seconds, which is already impressive in itself, but it's more impressive that it's faster than my cheats record, which means we can use the no cheats rocket time as both the cheats and no cheats record. It is now the final day, and so far I've completed 9 of the 14 records, which means we have the 2 Venus records, 2 Mercury records, and finally the career record. I'll first attempt to break the Venus non-cheats and cheats record at the same time. And honestly, this is my favorite record to break so far. I started, like usual, using my moon and back no-cheats rocket. I originally just added heat shields on the front of the lander, but the heat shields would burn up time after time after time. I then remembered that sideways heat shields don't actually burn up due to atmospheric heating. I originally tried using a single wall of the these heat shields, but this made the rocket incredibly unstable and it flipped around and burned up anyways. My next idea was to add these heat shields which would cause more drag in the back of the lander so that it would be more stable when entering the Venus atmosphere. And this actually worked out so well that I didn't even need to use this engine which helped to slow it down. The part I find most incredible about this run is that the current world record is set by the same guy I mentioned earlier at 2 minutes and 16 seconds in the cheats category. However, I managed to break that record without using cheats in a new time of a minute and 37 seconds. Now it's time for both Mercury records. For the cheats record, the task is pretty simple. Just make a super fast rocket to get an encounter with Mercury, land on the surface, and return back to Earth. The current record for this run is 2 minutes and 35 seconds, and I managed to beat it where my final time is 2 minutes and 22 seconds. Then comes the Mercury no cheat speed run. This is probably the toughest record that I've attempted so far. One of the issues is that there is no atmosphere on Venus to help slow the rocket down to prevent it from sliding climbing into the surface. And I also found a few bugs in the run that make it unreasonably challenging. So what I ended up doing is just planning out a normal mission that took around 14 minutes. This might seem like a long time, but the previous record for this run was a total of 35 minutes. So we got the first place anyways. Finally, it's time for the career any percent 1.5.6 plus speed run. This run, well, is completely different from all the other runs. The timer starts when you press play, and the timer stops when you unlock every single part. The current fastest run starts by loading in a rocket that gets to the Carmen line using only solid rocket boosters. This will give you enough credits to unlock four of the upgrades. He then loads another rocket that's aimed at going to the moon and back, which gives even more credits to finish the rest of the tech tree. Now, this run would be possible if it wasn't for a glitch in the iOS version. For whatever reason, things become bouncy when they touch the ground. Normally, I would just bulldoze through the record like the glitch wasn't there. This glitch makes the run so challenging that even getting to the Carmen line and back has the potential to jeopardize the run. Regardless, we finally hold 16 of the 17 possible records on speedrun.com, which is 16 more records than Spaceship broke in his 9 minute video. Just saying, you should consider.